Hello, everyone, and welcome to day six of the Google Teacher Certification uh, Scenario 6. Funny how they kind of go together, isn't it? Today, we are going to be looking at one of the more esoteric parts of the Google uh, Suite and the Google Classroom and on the assessment, and that is Google Sites. Google Sites is, again, uh, one of those fun, really exciting kind of tools that you can use. Some people criticize it because it's so simple. Um, you know, as someone who's taught um, HTML coding, uh, I find simplicity a nice uh, change of pace. The other thing about using a Google Sites as opposed to any of the other commercial sites that are out there is that it is based on simple HTML. That way you don't get in trouble. A lot of these sites that are out there that are even free for teachers to use are based upon Flash. If you're not aware of it, Flash is going away uh, in a big way from most browsers. Uh, I think Chrome is getting rid of it uh, this December. So using the Google Sites, because it's also tied into everything within the Google Classroom, is the obvious answer. Now, having said that, one of the things that you have to be aware of is what is your district's um, guidelines for using browsers or for using websites and browsers. Some districts don't want you creating your own websites because they want your website to look like all the other websites in the district. So they're going to want to for you to use a template that's been approved by a central office um, and probably get trained in whatever a tool they use to create that. Also, they're worried about, you know, kids' work being put on public websites where people can see. There are ways to get around that in the Google Classroom website, uh, and I'll show you. But it's one of those things, it's one of those issues, if you're going to do it, make sure you ask some questions. Ask your school technology coordinator, ask your principal, ask someone who would have knowledge about this kind of thing, before you go and, and jump into it. But I think the one caveat that I would say to you, and you can make sure, and I'll show you again how to do this, you can keep your Google site non-public. You can keep it private if you wanna use that word. And that way you are really safe. The only people who could see it would be the people who, who you allow to see it. Uh, I would always urge you to err on the side of caution when it comes to websites because they're so easy uh, to find, especially the Google ones, because of course, everything you do in the Google site, it is tagging it like crazy. So if you were to put a name into your Google site and someone were to do a Google search, they'll find it because of the name you put in there. So just, yeah, I'm not trying to scare you off from using it. I just want you to realize you need to think a little bit when you go to make a site. It's extremely easy to use. And our scenario today is reflects that. It's very simple to use. Before we jump into it, though, I do want to kind of revisit, because I've had questions. I want to revisit the Google Classroom and kind of do our little thing we do, where we always post a, uh, um, a heading, uh, an announcement, excuse me. And that is the pieces that make up the classroom. Let's look at that again, if you don't mind. So we're going to go to Classwork. And one of the things that I think um, people get a little confused about, and it's very easy to get confused about, is so what do you do when you click on this create button? What are you creating? That's a really good question. So when you look at it, what you can see is you have an assignment, you've had a quiz assignment, you have a question, you have material, reuse a post, and topic. So let me just take a second here to review all of this. Topics are the way that you organize your Google Classroom. And a topic can be nothing more than the unit of study. Um, you know, if it's, if it's that time of the year where you're doing quadrilaterals or you're doing shapes, you know, you'll have a topic called shapes. If you're doing something like um, slope, finding for slope, you can have a topic called slope. In other words, it is your organizational tool. The assignment is, is, is 
is close to what you're used to doing. The assignment is where you can put in things that say, um, go to your Google and uh, Drive and create a Google Doc explaining da 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 da. Go to your Google Drive and create a slides presentation to explain what we've learned in class. You know, so on and so on and so on. Quiz assignment is exactly what we were playing with last week in forms. Now, remember I said a quiz a form can be either a form slash survey or quiz. And we looked at both of those last week. This is where you can create a standalone quiz that everybody would see. But this is where it gets a little, people get a little confused. So let me show you what I mean. So when you go into assignment and you come down here and you click on create or you click on the add, so you can add all this stuff into your assignment and that's what we're used to doing. But if you come over here and do a create, see, from here you can create documents and slides and sheets and drawings and forms. So within the assignment, you can put all of these kinds of things in here. In other words, use the doc that's inside the assignment to write about whatever we've been doing in class. Use the slides template. Remember how we did that last week. We can create a series of slides and make them a template that we could save and then put into here. Sheets, the same thing. Drawings, the same thing. And of course, then forms is the same thing. So you can see where people get a little confused about how all of this sort of works together because it's like, well, what do we do? How do we put things, how do you put things together? Well, if you think about quiz assignment, then what you're basically doing is you're creating some using the Google Forms. Don't let it throw you because it doesn't have to be a, doesn't have to be a quiz. We know that. It can be anything we want it to be. In other words, it can be a survey. It can be a quiz. And these you kind of think about, they sort of stand on their own. Uh, if you want to think about it as a summative assessment, go right ahead because that's the way that you could think about it. Question, this is, this is one that I think a lot of teachers overlook. So the question would be that question you would ask everybody. And you can make it, if you look over here, you can make it multiple choice, you can make it short answer. The idea with the question is, it can be that sort of bell ringer, it can be that sort of idea that question you put that sort of solidifies what you're talking about in class that gets everybody on the same page oh that's what we're talking about today got it the point of it is it shows up in the stream right there where everybody can see it and as you can look over here you can see that you can assign it to topics this is why the topic is so important because it becomes the place where things go but here's the one i really want to show you Material. So material, material just stays. It's where you can put things in there that you want to always be there for the kids. Okay. So today I'm going to create a material folder and I'm going to call it our Google site. And if I had a name for it and I'm being a little bit non-creative today, <laughs> uh, let's see, our Google site for studying planets. Let's do that. Okay. And what I can do is from my Google site, I can put in the link right there. And so this then becomes um, a place that I can have a jumping off spot from my classroom over to my Google Sites. And from my Google site, I can put the link back. Okay, so see, I can do a put a link right there and that would be the link. We haven't created it yet, would be the link to my Google Classroom. But again, notice what it does right here. This allows me to load it up with things from my 
I can use the stuff from my drive. I can create new content. I can create anything that I want to, and I can put it into my materials folder. And that becomes a place for me to, it will always be there. So what you're trying to do with materials is it's kind of like, okay, so what is it the kids need to have available to them all the time? If I'm teaching a chemistry class, maybe in the materials folder would be where I'd put the periodic table. If I were teaching various different kinds of math classes, in the material folder, it might be where I would put the explanations of how to find for different kinds of formula in my, my math class. In social studies, definitions, so on and so on and so on. That's what the material folder can be. You can look at it that way. All right, let's go. We're going to go into our drive because that's what it says to do in our little um, scenario here. It says, Mr. Smithington would like his students to create a digital portfolio using Google Sites. To get a feel for it, Mr. Smithington decides to make a template. Oh, boy. Okay. First of all, templates for the old version. They don't do, you'll see it in a second here. So when it says template here, don't freak out. It may not even say it, but if it does, don't freak out because what we're going to create, we're going to create it so that people can use it. We want to use, uh, let's see, create a site, my portfolio, portfolio, be sure to use the new Google sites. Sure. Got it. All right. So here's my exam materials. I'll go in here and I'll do a click on new, I'll come down to more, and I'll go down to Google Sites. Bada bing, bada boom, here I am. Now, in Google Sites, what we have here looks very similar in a lot of ways to slides, if you ask me, uh, except there's no menu across the top. There's this sort of uh, weird kind of location over here, and we'll go over those in just a second. It is an extremely simple tool to use. Just be careful. Don't let it intimidate you with all this boxes popping open when you mouse across things because it's showing you where stuff is. We are going to give this site. It says it wants us to use it called My Portfolio. Sure, will do. So up there, I'm going to click and I'm going to type in My Portfolio. Done. As you can see, it changes the name here. Easy peasy, easy peasy. It wants us to set the theme to impression. Well, cool. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on themes and I'm going to come down and I'm going to look for impressions. This is basically where you can add what you want your page, call it the home page if you want. And let's see if it makes us change that. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll change this title up and we'll call it my portfolio as well. That way we're all on the same page when it comes to what we're supposed to be doing. So there we go. Now, when you come down here, and this isn't on the test, but I'm just showing it to you. You can change the image here for this, for this background. So if I do a change image, as you can see, I get different looking backgrounds. And if I click on it and I select it, now you got that kind of look. I can reset it back to what it was, or I can go in and change it again, depending upon what I want to do. If I do header type, what it does is it gives me these looks of how I want things to look. So if I wanted to do a large banner, you can see it does that. There's a regular banner. This is the cover. In other words, this whole page is nothing but this. And then I can do title only, which is boring. <laughs> Now, one of the things that um, my old training for web design always taught me, and I think this still holds true, 
is web pages need to be simple but not boring. So a lot of people think that leaving things with this kind of look, we need more stuff down here. <clears throat> not necessarily. The tools that are over here give you all the opportunity in the world to add anything in here that you want and to make it look nice. I think that's the key, is you want it to make it look nice. So right now we've got everything named. We have decided on a nice picture. It says add our sentence uh, to in the body of the uh, I want to make sure where it wants me to put it. The body of the site. Okay. All right. How do I do that? Well, I come over here to text and I add a text box. That's all. Okay. I am feeling sunny. It may be cold outside, but I feel warm. Okay. Done. Simple, simple. Notice that when I do that, uh, when I click on this this box, you get your really sort of standard looking icons up here that let you do things. Um, you don't want to code the font, <laughs> leave it alone. Uh, and you can go in here and you can bold it, you can do whatever you want to do to it. If you um, make a mistake, just go up here to the undo button up here at the top. Okay. One of the nice things too is, is you can insert a link right into the text box if you want to do that. And when you do do the text box, notice it's it's popping up over here on the left hand side to let me have access to things like I can make this background for this text section different. I can duplicate the section. So if I like the look of what I've created, I want to make the rest of them look the same. I can just duplicate, duplicate change out the uh, words, or I can just delete it. Simple, 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 simple. Notice that it doesn't let me drag it around on the screen. That's what's called flat HTML. You're not going to do anything fancy, fancy with the stuff that you make, but that's okay. We're now going to create a new page. And to do that, I go over here to Pages, and then I'm going to click on the plus sign, and it's going to ask me to, to name my new pages, and I'm going to call it Vacation. Sorry, my pieces of paper are sliding out of my hand. Is it Vacation or Vacations? It is Vacation. Okay, thanks. I did. Now we have another page called Vacation. You'll notice that the look up here on the header stayed the same. The only thing it changed was words. Kind of cool. So this is why when you do that, you have to think about what you're doing. Notice that the way mine is set up is my pages are going to appear across the top up here. And I'll show you that you, you can change that up. And so once we do that, it wants us to insert a map of the United States and then uh, insert, uh, create another page. Okay, we'll do that. We'll insert the map first. Let's look at the insert for a second, shall we? So here's where the text box was that we were just playing with. Uh, here's the images, and you could probably guess what all this is coming from. Here's the drive, where I can go back into my drive, find whatever I want to put in here. These are the layouts. This is how you can organize your page. So this is kind of a nice way to sort of get a head start on what you want your page to look like. So see if I click on that, it's giving me a place to put something over here, and then it gives me a place to put something over there which is kind of nice. You know, if, if you kind of have an idea, this is the kind of look you want to keep going through, 
it gives you a nice sort of beginning place. It wants us to put in a map and look at this. You can scroll down through here and look at all the things you can do. You can put in this image carousel is just too cool for school. What it does is it lets you put in a place where you can then load up a whole bunch of pictures. Why would you do that? Well, that way you don't waste a lot of the space on your sites with, you know, stacks and stacks and stacks of pictures. You can have them in just one location that you control them around. That is really one of the coolest things they have. A button is exactly what you think it is. It's a button where you can say, click here to go to such and such a place. YouTube, we're going to use it in just a second. And then calendar, yes, you can put your calendar in here. And then map. Well, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Now, it wants me to put in a location, and I think it just wants me to use the United States. Yep. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to insert a map of the United States. And when I do that, there's my map, and I'm going to select it. And it drops it in right here. Now, notice I've got some buttons here that are some handles. Excuse me. They're called handles, not buttons. That I can grab things and make them bigger or smaller. And that's nice. I can have all the functionality now of a Google Earth site. Now, to me, that is really kind of cool. And it allows me to zoom in. I can either zoom in um, or over here. When, when I publish all of this, I can actually use my scroll wheel to zoom in. So everything that I'm used to being able to do in uh, Google Earth, I can do right from my, my Google Sites. I'm going to create another page entitled My Videos. So I'm going to go back to Pages. And this time, I'm going to hit my plus. And I'm going to call this my videos. Bang, there it is. Simple as that. Find a YouTube video you like and embed it onto the page. So we got sort of a thing going here. So let's see. Let's go to YouTube. And let's do a thing about national parks. Twenty-five best national parks in the U.S. There we go. Done. Simple as that. What we can do now is it's asking us to uh, make uh, Miss Fizzit. Yes, make Miss Fizzit a editor. You know how to do that. Now, when you do this, this is where I want it for you to stop for a second and think. When you go to publish to the web, you can make it a web address. Or you can make it your own. But if you share with others, this is where you can, anyone who has the link can view. This is where you can slow down how people can see it. I'm going to make it anyone with the link not public on the web. Or I can make it very specific people. So in other words, if I just want certain people to see, a.k.a. my class, then I can do that. Now I'm going to jump back. Or I can invite people in. So let's see. Miss Fissett, what are we going to let her do? She can be an editor. All right. So her email address is gce level one at gmail.com. So we're going to make her an editor and she can edit now. Also, notice I can put down here a little message. Please. You don't have to do this on the test, but I'm just showing you. Please review and make changes. And that's letting her know that she can do that. All righty. Now, 
When we come up here, let's go back and look at this again. Under publish, anyone can find and view. Mm, do we want to do that? Anyone who has a link can view. That'll keep us safe. Did I spell her name wrong? <laughs> oh, I forgot parent. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I apologize, I apologize, Miss Fissett. Let's see, you are GCE level one parent. Now let's just get rid of you. GCE level one parent at gmail.com. My bad. There we go. And now she popped in. Okay. Send. Got it. Cool, huh? Now, publishing to the web. Once you get up here, there's a couple things you can do. You can you can share this with others and have the it's the same thing. Okay, just to show you. Over here, this allows you to put some things in if you want to. Uh, analytics is kind of interesting because it actually lets you see how many times someone's visited your site, et cetera, et cetera. The navigation is where I was talking about where I have mine across the top. You can change that to where it's down the side. And you'll see that when we go to publish it. You'll see how that changes up. Now, one of the things that I urge you to do as you work through creating a site is to publish it and publish it on a fairly regular basis so you can, people can see it. Make sure you put that check in. And you're going to publish. And once you've done that, you are able to kind of see what it's going to look like, which is handy. Because what you want to do is you kind of want to see, okay, so what does my page look like? And I always need to be checking that as I go along. So I'm going to go to preview now that I've published it. And now I can see what it's going to look like. And over here, you'll notice, so home is that. Vacation is that. Remember what I said about this is live? So I can zoom in just like I was with Google Earth. And then that's that. Simple as that. And then you X out of it and it takes you right back to here. I'm going to go one little step further because this I think is so cool that we don't want to overlook it. Uh, over here, where we have the ability to uh, put things in under insert, there's this one here called embed. So you can embed things from the web that allows it to be something that you can play with, experience, use as a tool, um, right on your own site. And that way you don't have to send kids over to it. You can send them to here and then you can send them back to your uh, classroom to have to work on it. Now let me, um, let me see if I can get us to one of my favorite all time of these. And this is FET. Um, if you don't know about FET, you need to know about FET. So let's go in and look at FET. I don't know what our thing is that we're doing. Um, da, 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 da. We're kind of doing sort of an earth science thing, I guess. So we'll go here. You can look at it as a grid or you can look at it as a list. You can look at it through various ways of finding it. You can look at it all kinds of ways. So, but here's what I want to show you. If we go in, let's just grab something. Let's go in and look at balloons and static electricity. First of all, 
notice that when you're in the FET, it will automatically, it will do a dump over to your classroom. That's something that's not on the test, and I wish it were. In other words, uh, if we had the time and I could put you in a room and I could really show you the power of this thing, then one of the most powerful things about the Google Classroom is how much is connected to it now. So that when you find these kinds of resources, all you have to do is click on the little picture of the Google Classroom, and it says, says share to which classroom. And then I go down here and I find my classroom. And then what it does then is it says, where do you want it to be shared to? So see, I can make it a material, something I want to use it for. I could make it the source, the beginnings of an assignment. Isn't that cool? Now for my web page, let's just go ahead and see what happens if I take the embed code. And here it is. And now I'm going to copy this. Now, I have to be honest with you and warn you that when you do this kind of thing, and I know that th this has nothing to do with uh, our parks and things here, but what you have to be careful about is sometimes um, the embed codes are old and they're not being allowed to be used anymore. As you can see, I got a problem with this one. Okay. Oh, no, it's because it says I'm using the wrong thing. Embed code, Steve. There you go. All right. Now, what it just did is it put in the embed code, if it can, somewhere. Looks like that it didn't. I'm not going to freak out because remember, I don't have to use embed code. I can use that right there. So I can use the electricity, Earl. Come down here, and this time what I might want to embed, because we know how to do that, is right here in my little box, or I might want to put it in its own little box. So if I come over here and I do another text box, I can put in that link. And once I click on the publish button, it will show me what it looks like. I can go up here also, remember, I can go up here and preview it. And if I click on that, it takes me over here to that site. Kind of cool. Sites. One of the most interesting things about sites that I find. Um, oh, we need to do our announcement, don't we? I have created a Google site for you. I'm going to go back over to my Google site. I'm going to go home. I'm going to grab that URL. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my page. And I'm going to add a link. And once it gets done, it's going to bring a little picture of that link in here. And I'm going to say post. There you go. Now, what you can do is back over in the Google Sites, so you can get yourself home again. You can go in here and you can drop into back into editing mode. Go here to go back to our classroom. And you can put a link back to your classroom from here. Let's copy that. 
go back over here to portfolio. Drop that in. Again, go up and take a look at it. See everything works. Boom. Now, the reason why this is working so seamlessly is, and I wrote that wrong. I have created a Google site for you. Can we fix that, please? Thank you. We'll go up here and we'll fix that. It should be created a Google site for you. Gosh, I am having trouble with my spelling today. There we go. And we have ways to go back and forth and back and forth. That, my friends, is Google Sites. Easy, uh, especially on the uh, test. The creation of it is so simple. Just remember, don't let the word template throw you. Uh, there is no such thing as a template anymore. What you can do is you can create a site and you put people into that site with permissions to um, create things. And one of the cool things about it is you can come down here and you can go to pages. And I can say, uh, on page. I can say done. Now, when I open John's page, what I can do is I can make sure that I can either, I can hide it from navigation so that people can't see it. But more importantly, and you know this now because we've played enough with this. When I go to publish it, who am I going to give rights to? Who am I going to give the rights to on this page? John. So I'll say, who has access? Anyone who has the link can view. I'm going to say, nobody off, shared with specific people. And I'm going to save that. And then down here, I'm going to put John's Gmail account in here. And that way, he owns this page. That's as close to a template as you're going to get in this new version. See if there's anything else I'm missing here. We talked about the mode where navigation, where you can have it on the top or the side. Uh, color, eh, you know, <laughs> you know. I, I like I said, my training was to use uh, white as my background. You can do, um, you can change this up. Want to? I wouldn't. Again, the beauty of all this is it's easy. Now you could, oh, this is a question on the test, by the way. So if I go up here to themes and change this up, does it wipe out everything I've done? Well, let's see what happens. So we're going to change it to diplomat. And let's go look and see how it changed everything. Well, John's page looks okay. Home page looks okay. Vacation looks okay. So everything looks fine. You know, nothing got changed. If I wanted to do diplomat, and let's see, I can change that. And will it change up everything else? Sure. You know, it's simple. All right, let's go back and look at our questions for today. Miss Villa Garcia has been tasked by the principal to improve communication and discussion between teachers and support staff. What is the most appropriate tool to fulfill this need? Whoa. Well, this could be, we need to look at this. A and B we can take out. As it says, improve communication discussion between teachers and staff. Sheets doesn't do that. You know that. Um, Sheets can be a part of it, but that's not the answer. She can use your Google Drive to create a shared folder containing school admin and policy documents, useful templates, and other shared materials. She can use a Google site to build a website containing all the school's policy documents and set up a contacts page so staff members can send their comments directly to her to distribute to relevant people. I don't see that up there in the question. Or you can easily create a Google group. And that can be an online discussion forum and invite all the relevant people to start conversations to participate. I think it's group. 
You cannot use embed codes to insert objects into Google Sites. You now know that that's false. In Sites, how do you set a page template as a default page for each page created? Okay. If you go into your page and you go over here, you see, it's not here, folks. <laughs> so that question should not be on the test. Okay. Now you can set it as the page default by going into uh, themes. Who can make a website using Google Sites? Anybody? When customizing a search tool for Google Sites, the search option settings include allow search at google.com, allow search only at this site, allow search to all the sites, it's all of the above. In Sites, what kind of files can you upload to a file cabinet page? Don't let that throw you. There's nothing special about something called file cabinet. It's just a page they created called file cabinet. And you know what the answer to this one is, B. If a student is given can view access to a Google site, can she upload documents as page attachments? Nope, you know that. In sites, what mode do you need to be in to add lesson plan files to a file cabinet page? Again, you need to be able to edit. edit or preview, because you want to be able to see what it looks like. Not view, preview. When creating a new Google site, is it possible to use a template from the template? Okay, this one, again, is wrong. It shouldn't be here. Um, what it should say, is it possible to use a theme from the theme gallery and then change to a blank theme once the site has been created? Absolutely, we just showed you how to do that. When you create a page, I got I, I should have not used these questions and I apologize. When you create a page theme in Google Sites, how do you apply it to the new pages you make? It automatically does. So it says it will appear. If a group of students are made editors of a Google site, are they able to remove an attachment or commit comment that they did not have, they did not upload or create? Uh, it's B. They can remove comments, but not attachments. What does the more options section allow you to do when creating a new Google site? See, this is the right answer right here, or this is the right uh, focus right here. The only thing it'll let you do is A and B, add site categories and site descriptions. All right, down here to our Google Sites flashcards, let's just take a quickie look at these. Share a site with specific groups or people. Click the share button on the top right corner and share a link and da da da. You know that. We've been doing it now for what, six days? Manage the side navigation for use. Go to the gear, edit slide layout, move mouse to the sidebar, navigation, and click to edit. It's easy. Manage the horizontal navigation. And all you do, like I just showed you, edit the theme of a site. Gear, settings, themes, colors, and fonts. Page level permissions. Okay. Navigation. Layout. This is what I was talking about. Don't mess up your website with tons of stupid stuff. This is a good question. Header, sidebar, page, content, footer. Look at that again. That will be on the test. Okay. Remember, it's in, the, it's in those layouts we were looking at. When it says the name of the page in the location, don't let that throw you. Uh, because you can, when it when we had to create our page, remember it said to put it under home. That's kind of the way it, it's done. But you can put, you can, you can make sub pages under any page, if that makes sense. So you don't have to um, worry when it asks you a question like that, see your pages. 
So if I went down here to vacation and I wanted to add a sub page, see, I can do that. And so my sub page might be pictures from my vacation. And you would spell my right. Gosh, I'm having trouble today with spelling. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Done. And so now under here, I have a new link. Now, if you go up here and preview that, you'll see that it's located vacations and then under vacation, I have a new place I can go called photos for my vacation, or pictures for my vacation. Good question. Once a Google site is created, you can change the site category description in the, oops, forgot to flip it, in the, well, it should be more, which is the three dots. Placing gadgets into your Google site is done from the insert. To create a hyperlink, click on edit page, highlight the text, and click on insert link, site, address, paste it in now. Or you can just paste it straight in. To see all the pages in your Google site, you go up and you say manage site and unsee all the pages. When a Google form is embedded in a Google site, any changes to the Google form will not appear in the form on the Google site. Nope, it will. It is possible to format when the embedded gadgets appear on the page by editing the alignment properties and wrapping of a gadget. Very true. The change the default logo in the header of your site. Easy. Again, I think one of the things I like about sites is it's a very um, full featured, but extremely simple. And as long as you're not a person who has been trained in CSS and uh, all those other kinds of much more advanced ways of using a website, you'll be fine with this. You'll actually get a big kick out of it. Now let's close it out with this. Google Sites is a fantastic way to expand the footprint of your Google Classroom. Google Sites allows you to do some things, frankly, that you cannot do inside your Google Classroom. And as we did, we can go from our Google Classroom to our cool Google Site. And we can see all the neat things that we have created there. Not only can we see them, we can actually play with them. So we can play with things, simulations, tools, et cetera, et cetera. It really does make for a really nice package. And then of course, for my Google site, I can put in the link back here. We talked a lot about the various kinds of tools that are in classwork. I wanted to make sure you got this because when we leave here today and come back tomorrow, we start really getting into the minutia of the Google Classroom test. And I just want to make sure that we're all okay. And the dog is barking, so he's telling us that we should be done. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can text me at 502-457-2937. Uh, I, I do get texts from you all, and I appreciate that. And I get really good questions. As always, though, stay safe. Take care of each other. We will all get through this together, and we'll all come back together together. And we'll look back on this and we'll all have our, our stories. I will see you tomorrow.